My name is Steve Boffman. I'm a lawyer and part-time student at the Graduate Theological Union in Berkeley. I've been investigating Ravi Zacharias for a little over five years now, and what I'm about to share with you is brand new information that is far and away the most troubling thing about Mr. Zacharias ever to come to light. Most of you know Ravi Zacharias as a successful and wealthy international evangelist. Some of you may know that in 2017, he filed a lawsuit around claims that he had sexually groomed a married woman online. Several days after he settled that lawsuit with a non-disclosure agreement, he issued a press release denying sexual wrongdoing and stating that in 16,000 days of marriage, he never once was unfaithful to his wife, Margie. He also said that he has, quote, long made it my practice not to be alone with a woman other than Margie and our daughters, not in a car, a restaurant, or anywhere else. What you may not have known is that Mr. Zacharias had a side business, and it was a business that allowed him regular opportunity to be alone with women. Mr. Zacharias was in the health spa and massage business. And based on my recent interviews with one of his male business partners and with two women who worked in the spas, what he did in those massage rooms was not just sexual, but sexually abusive. Let's take a look. First of all, if you're like I was, you may find it hard to believe that Ravi Zacharias would get involved in the massage and spa business, but here's proof. His first spa operation was Touch of Eden in Alpharetta, Georgia, where his ministry has its headquarters. That business started around 2004, maybe earlier. What you see here is the grand opening of his second spa business, Jivan Wellness in Johns Creek, Georgia. Jivan began in 2008, and you can see his partner here in the closing frames. That's the man I spoke to several times. If you want to see the whole video, it is currently on YouTube under Jivan Wellness Grand Opening. Here's what the three witnesses told me about Mr. Zacharias. I had a, quote, close relationship with Ravi. He was a sexual pervert, and I know of many women he molested. During a particular kind of treatment that did not involve the client removing their clothes, Ravi exposed himself to me and, quote, asked me to massage around there. I asked, did Ravi harass the women? Quote, that is all true, unquote. I asked his partner at Javan what it was like to see Ravi preach against sexual immorality while he was being immoral with the women at the spa. Quote, that is probably the reason I killed Javan, unquote. Let me take a brief moment away from the witnesses and tell you that I just received a phone call minutes ago from a pastor named Johnny Hunt. He was a good friend of Ravi Zacharias's and he spoke at the Javan Grand Opening. You saw a little clip of him there. Uh, pastor Hunt called me. I'd been trying to reach him. He told me that uh, something I already knew, Ravi had a very, very bad back. I know this because I had dinner with Ravi about two and a half years ago and it was obvious during the meal that he was in pretty severe pain. Pastor Hunt told me that Ravi needed to have various kinds of um, massage and other sorts of treatments for his back. Pastor Hunt told me that uh, Mr. Zacharias, quote, he would fly women in from India to do the treatments, unquote. Pastor Hunt described Jivan as a world-class spa, and he said that the plan was to, quote, make the gospel known through the profits of the company. That was Ravi's plan. I asked him about the sex stuff and he said, quote, absolutely never heard such a charge and I was a regular customer, unquote. So back to the trenches of the spa. I asked a woman who worked there, why would a wealthy man like Ravi go into the massage business? Quote, his back and sexual perversions and to satisfy whatever sick part of your brain, unquote. I asked one of them, should Ravi's ministry apologize? Quote, I wanted Ravi to say sorry and I was getting to that point with Ravi, unquote. An apology would be a, quote, good idea, unquote, but it should, quote, come from Margie, unquote. This person says they know Margie very well and they would speak to her about this. Quote, I felt guilty not crying out to the world of his deviant appetite, but he threatened me and I was afraid of him, unquote. Quote, I told him to get help from his brothers at RZIM. He went ballistic, unquote. Since Mr. Zacharias had claimed his policy was never to be alone with women, I asked, were the Javan massage therapists male and female? Answer, they were both. Quote, but Ravi preferred the women, unquote. I am truly sorry that this information did not come to light while Ravi Zacharias was still alive. But as long as his ministry continues to raise money on his good name, this information needs to be shared. Also, the really big story here is much bigger than Ravi Zacharias. Who knew? Who profited? Who remained silent? And how was one of the world's most famous preachers able to hide his deceptions from so many people, including prominent celebrities, 
and the people in the highest reaches of the U.S. government. This good man, this godly man, he spoke truth. He spoke it with kindness and a deep and abiding care for every person who would listen. In Ravi Zacharias, God gave us the greatest Christian apologist of this century. Perhaps it's time to start acknowledging some of the folks who know better, in particular some of the women who Ravi Zacharias mistreated and who now go about their lives suffering in silence, afraid to speak, or in the case of the woman Mr. Zacharias sued, unable to speak because of a non-disclosure agreement. What kind of message do we send to them when we describe Ravi Zacharias the way we just heard Vice President Pence do? My hope is that this video will prompt professional journalists to investigate and help fill out our very incomplete picture of Ravi Zacharias. I also hope that they can help us understand how it is that powerful religious men keep getting away with this sort of conduct. I'd also like to let you know that for over six weeks now, increasing numbers of Christian leaders have grown concerned about the spa allegations and about other issues that have been raised about Ravi Zacharias. The three spa witnesses I interviewed, two by phone, one by email, have also shared their evidence and their testimony with one of these leaders. And this leader has contacted RZIM leadership and urged them to investigate and to respond. The other Christian leaders are hoping that RZIM will do so. And two weeks ago, I also invited RZIM to respond to this new evidence. They did not reply to me, but there may be reason for optimism. They have a new president, Michael Ramsden. You see him here. He recently moved to Georgia to begin the job. Will RZIM under Mr. Ramsden finally acknowledge that Ravi Zacharias, for all the many good things he did, had a thorn in his side, and it was a thorn that harmed women and that continues to harm those who have traumatic memories of what he did to them? Or will RZIM cover it up? I hope these revelations won't spark a theological fistfight. No atheist should use the Ravi Zacharias example as a club against Christianity, and no Christian, it seems to me, should let Ravi Zacharias' misconduct destroy their faith. The gentleman has given us a fantastic opportunity to better understand what goes on in the dark underbelly of the evangelical business world and to take meaningful steps towards greater integrity and basic human decency. Thank you for listening, thank you for caring, and thank you for doing something about it. A Friendly Banjo Atheist Production.